obviously is a really good football team, well coached, really good football team. Um, they're good in every area in the run game, the pass game. We needed to coach 60 minutes. We needed to play 60 minutes. We knew we were going to have to be really aggressive and come out and attacking them for, for minute, second one through the last second, which you saw. Um, we talked about um, the 60 minutes of football being the only thing that really mattered this week. We played some really good football teams um, and came out on some short ends. But this team has been resilient. They're tough. They learn from those mistakes. They learn from those times. It's a great lesson as they become husbands and fathers and grandfathers. And that's what this program's all about. And every time we do something like that, it comes back to the life teaching, the life moment, the life culture, and the life program. And uh, I couldn't be happier for our administration, state of Minnesota, our fans. I can't thank them enough for, and I think it's back-to-back -back sellouts or close to it, the stripe out, the energy they provide, our student body. And we do a walkthrough in our facility, and at 930, Greek Row was quiet. But we were honking the horns on the buses as we rolled by. And I think they got the message because uh, – when we came back, they were all out in force. And it was parents' week. A lot of parents in those frat, frat, frat yards as well. Um, huge win for our program. Um, unbelievable individual performances. Uh, but what a team effort. We knew we were going to have to take, um, I don't know if you want to call them risks. So to me, they weren't very hard decisions uh, because of the team you're playing. And you don't get many chances to beat a top 10, top 11, top 12 team. Uh, and a team that, you know, uh, a lot of people, and we were listening all day, and we got a chance to listen to the media, and, you know, I got a lot of respect, and Joe Klatt's one of my favorites, and at the end of the Penn State game, they're all shaking hands, and Joe Klatt says he can't wait for the USC and Penn State matchup for the college football playoff. And uh, I just kind of took that in and had a lot of respect for him, but you're always looking for things to be able to show your team. Like, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's part of it, you know? and. Uh, we're not going to you know, listen to the external piece, but I've said before, this is one of the best two and three football teams in the country and maybe one of the most well-prepared two and three football teams for, the, for, uh, for what's ahead because of our schedule and how hard it's been and uh, no bye weeks and no breaks. A lot of guys out, a lot of guys banged up, a lot of guys have to step in, a lot of guys got hurt tonight. Uh, but that was gutsy. Uh, that was courage. That was bravery. And that was leadership. Allow the players to play. I thought Greg Harbo called it an unbelievable game. I thought Corey play, called an unbelievable game. And I thought our players left everything out there. It, these moments are really fun because there's a, there's a, there's a man to my right. Uh, and I don't want to embarrass him, but this is the only reason why I'm a head football coach and I can, I can do what I'm doing. You know, Mike Nolan, uh, my head coach for the Niners, who's here with his wife, Kathy, uh, means a lot that you're here because that's why I wear a tie. And uh, if he wouldn't have cut me that day, that moment, that second, uh, I wouldn't be able to experience these moments. And to not only do that to a, a worthless player, that's not going to make your team better in year three. You sit him down and say, I think you'd be a really good coach, and I think you should do this. And then offer him a job. That's what this whole thing's about with these players. Our job is to, one, have them be proud of the University of Minnesota and everything that this place stands for and allows them to become and love their alma mater. And two, make sure you teach them as many life lessons as possible so they can be the best men they can be. And, uh, Coach, it's an honor to have you here. And uh, thank you for always being here and supporting me and uh, being the biggest mentor in my life. So, um, yeah, I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I'm, I, I apologize to make that personal, but uh, he needs to hear that. I know I text them that all the time, but in front of all of you, this is what we've talked about all, all the time. It's not about a fashion statement. It's about the people that allowed myself and a lot of our staff and our players to have an opportunity to be here. And uh, I don't take that lightly. So congratulations to President Cunningham, Mark Coyle, our administration. They never stopped believing in us. Yeah. The first text or the first hug after really hard games is, is Mark Coyle. And uh, there's not a more supportive AD in the country. You take moments in times like this, when there's a win like this in program history, you got to be able to say those things, and rightfully so. But nobody deserves more credit than the staff, than the, than the staff and the coaches, or the, uh, the, staff, the staff, coaches, and players. They got to go do it, and uh, I couldn't be more proud of them. Couldn't be prouder. So I'm sure you have a lot of questions. We'll talk. Um, 
Paul, we're to start over at time zero now, so we'll allow them to have some questions. Andy's getting antsy over here. Andy, you got the first one. PJ, can you walk us through the decision to go for it on fourth and half a yard, a minute left? Wasn't very hard. I mean, it's a big call, but it wasn't very hard. I mean, I was asking a lot of people that are really close to us, what were you doing? And they are like, oh, yeah, we were definitely going for it. And then they're all kind of winking, like, maybe I should kick a field goal. Uh, but that put it's a player's game. How many times you heard me say that, right? It's a player's game. In a game like this, 17-17, how often do you have an inch to go beat USC? You don't have it very often. We kick that field goal and make it. That's fine. They went right down the field, everybody, just like they did all game. That's what they're going to do. And they don't throw the ball in the end zone like that, and we get to pick unless we, we go for that. So it was the decision not to just win the game, but protect the lead and allow us to play the defense we're going to need to be able to play to be able to seal that victory. And if you don't get it, okay, well, they've got to go 70 yards. They got the ball at the half-inch line. Like, okay, maybe we get a safety. Maybe we get a tip pass interception. Maybe they throw it to us at the midfield and we kick it anyway. We still had a timeout left. Put the ball and the game in the hands of the players and let them go win it for themselves. And they did. I couldn't be, I couldn't be prouder of them. What, what, a, what an amazing team to coach with an incredibly challenging schedule and no break. Was that the type of game you envisioned for Coy Paris when you signed him in December? Yeah, it is. The thing we told Coy in recruiting was, we're going to develop you, but we're going to develop you on the field. This isn't going to be a sit and wait a year, two years. You're going to play, and it might be a little bit in the beginning, and then we're just going to keep putting more on your plate. Keep putting more on your plate. And we had some guys go down today, but he was going to play a lot anyway, but he played a ton. He's just a football player. And you put him in that position, I mean, he always thinks he's getting an interception. He always thinks he's taking a punt for a touchdown. He wants to play offense. He, like, he'd be all 11 if he could. He'll play right guard. Like, that's the type of kid he is. But this is exactly what we envisioned when we recruited him. And I give him a lot of credit because he could have went a lot of different places, right, for – Again, we're not the highest bidder. And he loves the state of Minnesota. His family loves the state of Minnesota. The bad moms love the state of Minnesota. And I'm just thankful that he believed in the Gophers enough to come here. And he's going to have a very, very, very bright future here. And maybe one of the most popular players at such a young age I've ever seen. Um, maybe Corey Davis at Western Michigan as a, as, a, as a true freshman started coming on the scene, but like nobody really knew. Uh, to do this as a true freshman takes a very, very unique individual. You know, Darius did a lot for us last year, but this is, he, he's, he's, he's a different cat now. And he's wired a little different. And I like the way he's wired. What did you think of the way you were able to generate movement and execute in the ground game tonight? Yeah, you know, after, I think, you know, Daniel, I don't think we moved the ball well up front in the first quarter. We had a very honest conversation on the sideline with the O-line tight ends. And, and, and it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a mad conversation. It was a belief conversation about knocking them off the ball. If we want to win this game, we have to win the line of scrimmage. Don't worry about anything else. Fly off the football. And uh, they, were, they started doing that in the second quarter, third quarter, and then in the fourth quarter. Uh, I thought what got us going in the second half, I, we went, I think we opened three drives with some screens. that, you know, they're at, they're, This is a very different, difficult defense to, to game plan. This is just like Wink Martindale. They come from the same tree. You have no idea what you're going to see at the beginning of the game, in the middle of the game, and definitely when he makes adjustments in the second half. Um, but our guys kept their composure and their poise, played really hard, uh, used their fundamentals and technique, and that was love out there. That was connection and love and all those things that you know, not enough people talk about. The number one thing that connects a locker room is gratitude. And this team has always been grateful to just keep coming back and learning and growing. Give them credit. What do you feel about Marcus Major, how he spelled uh, Darius tonight? You know, I don't think it's about, Randy, I love that, uh, your question. But I don't know if it's about spelling. We have two really dynamic backs. And technically, we have three, four dynamic backs, just depending on how the game's going is depending on who we're going to play. But when you got a one-two punch, you got, you got a chance to be really good. You know, you watch a Penn State game today, and we have nothing else to do with watching games, you know, and – you know, you're preparing, came here for our walkthrough, but you're, they have two really dynamic backs, you know, and you've got to be able to have that one-two punch. 
And uh, especially with the way our backs are, they work really well in space. They catch the ball really well. They can do a lot of different things. That's why I said Greg, Greg Harbo called an amazing game because he just kept coming back to what our guys are really good at and then how can we generate explosive plays to start drives? How can we be able to keep them covering sideline to sideline? USC makes you cover sideline to sideline, but we're built a little different because they have athletes all over the place in space, but we were able to use the whole field sideline to sideline and, 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 and vertical to vertical. How much yeah. did the Michigan experience help you today? I don't know if it was, that's a great question, because I don't, I don't know if it was just the Michigan experience, because I think that goes one of two ways. When you lose really, really, th this team has lost hard, hard football games against really good teams. And we can say some teams right now aren't, but when we played them, they really are. North Carolina was a really good team when we played them with their quarterback. He was really, really talented. They were really good, right? Iowa, really, really talented, really, really good. That rivalry could have went either way. And, you know, we made some mistakes in the second half that Iowa takes advantage of that you can't make. The Michigan game, what a second half. But we didn't do it in the first half. You take all those things and you show them we have to learn from this, 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 and this. But if you put it all together for 60 minutes, guys, you're one of the most dangerous teams I've ever coached. Go be that. And you challenge them. And the antidote, we call it antidote, the antidote this week was all confidence. Belief, confidence. My, my pregame speech was 10 seconds. Let it rip. That's it. That's all I told them. And they did. They let it rip. TJ, those hidden stats, I, I always like, there was one sack, but there were six hurries, eight breakups, and three tackles for loss. A lot of pressure. There was really good pressure, and the pressure shrunk the pocket. If you saw in the first quarter, the quarterback was breaking contain, stepped up, got out of some holes, made some adjustments, made sure our guys were able to shrink the pocket, which I thought they did a really good job of, condensed him, made him make some ill-advised throws, and I thought our corners, DB safeties played their hearts out. They're going to get catches. Those are all four-star, five-star wideouts, and they're really good. That's a big-time quarterback that's throwing for 74% completion percentage. He's a big-time player. Their old line's averaging 325 across the board. Tight ends are good. Backs are good and strong. And uh, I thought we covered really well. Covered really well. It was tight coverage. We were knocking the ball out. We were in their hip. And even if they were going to make a catch, it was going to have to be in traffic. And not only that, I thought we hit them. You caught a ball. How many times did a kid go, you know, head over heels? And uh, I tell you, that, that, that can take a toll on you. We needed to be the most physical football team on this field tonight, and I thought we did that. So two weeks ago, uh, after Iowa, you said, don't give up on this team. You know, what, was, uh, what was kind of on your mind about what this bunch of men, you know, might be different than you've had? You know, I get the pleasure of being able to see the day-to-day, -day, the hour-to-hour, the minute-to-minute, the second-to-second. The second to second. Right? And, and I think that we always get judged on Saturday, but I know as a head coach how I got there. How did we get there? Like, how did that happen? These guys came in on Sunday after Michigan, ready to roll. Now, our pregame speech, you would have never thought we lost. Or postgame speech at Michigan, you would have never thought we lost. That was one of the most emotional, full of emotion, positive, straightforward messages I think I've ever delivered. There was more love in that locker room after that. Not that we were celebrating a, a moral victory. That's not what I'm talking about. But what they showed is dangerous. And if you can bring that love and gratitude and heart and spirit out, you can do something really special in college football. And they did. And that's why I said don't give up on this team. They're, they're doing things that are eventually going to pay off. Don't uh, Listen, I'm not, I'm not the biggest baseball follower. But I think Aaron Judge struggled early in the season. I think he was getting booed at Yankee Stadium. He had a pretty good year. Uh, Pete Alonzo, New York Mets. I think he was like four of 1,000 in the last two months. I'm not saying, I'm just kidding. Four of like 60. So he was batting 110 or 120. But you just, as my boss says, keep swinging. I say keep rowing. He says keep swinging, boss. And that's what you do. You just, you just keep doing it. And you keep getting them back to know, to get them to believe how good they really are. And look, they'll know if you're lying to them. I've never lied to this football team. Never would. They'd see right through it. They know how good they are. They know what they can be. It's one game. It's a 1-0 championship season for USC. One game. But you know what? It's a big game. They all are. And our schedule every week is a huge game. And uh, 
I'm just really proud of their uh, their efforts tonight. And th those moments and memories of, of the storm or the field storming and our students beyond the field, those never get old. They become addicting. And uh, I even looked at Mark, our officer. I said, right when Coy picks it off, I said, we're going to let him storm it, right? He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I saw people like holding up, let him on. And uh, sorry, Boston thinks that it's not his fault, but those are awesome. You know, and that's what college football is all about. I'm sure we'll have to pay a fine or do something like that, but that's, that's worth it. PJ, are you aware this is the first time Minnesota's beaten USC since 1955? No. Paul might have said something like that, but half the time Paul throws out stats that, stats that I don't even understand. Um, it's, it, that's what I mean. This is, this is it's great for our state. Um, this is why I love being here. This is why I said this last year, and I came out and said, like, it's okay to love the state of Minnesota and be the head football coach and love that here because I get to coach kids that I love coaching that have a crack on their shoulder, that are blue collar, that are overachievers, that believe in something bigger than themselves. And if you just stay consistent and you got a really good culture and you got really good coaches, you got really good people um, that just keep rowing that boat, things like this are going to happen. And uh, they don't happen as often as you want them because you expect to win all the time. But when they do, I mean, would you say 1955? That was a long, 1955. Isn't that from Back to the Future? Wasn't that a date? <laughs> Minnesota, sports, Minnesota sports fans have been through the lowest of lows, and some of those fans felt like the stadium got a little tense there when you decided to go for it on that fourth down. <laughs> kind of, oh, can you walk me through the emotions of when they say you stopped on third down, you have to go through that whole reviewing process, and then the kind of the ecstatic look that you showed after you got the touchdown? Yeah, I mean, that's... First of all, that's a hard call It's a, in terms of calling that touchdown, not touchdown. I mean, the way we spot that, and people are quarterback sneaking, everybody's running in from the side. There's a lot of pushing and shoving that happened by the time people get there. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, you'd like to be able to tell them, hey, guys, we're going to sneak this. So everybody just kind of come in a little closer, you know. Um, but it's, 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 a, it's a big call, but it was, it was an easy call. And, again, people are going to have their opinions, and that's – that's the job of the head coach because if we don't get that and they go down our score and then I hear about whatever I hear about, I'm a big boy. I have to make those decisions. We kick a field goal, they go down there. They don't run the plays they just ran, right? They're playing for a field goal or they're, you know, they're not going to throw it to the end zone on that play. They're playing a completely different style. Our whole philosophy was if we don't get this, they got to go 99 three-quarter yards, right, or 70 yards. But Michael Lance, had, you know, he had a field goal from 54, I mean, not even that far, but we were going to do everything we can. That very often, you got a quarter of a yard against USC to be the top 12 team in the country, and you're tied, and you're going to run quarterback sneak. Everybody in the building knew what we were going to run. I'm just, I'm just grateful we had a little bit more of the tush push, you know, that we got uh, than the play before. Take one or two more for coach. USC's longest play what, what, tonight. What would you have done? Great, your timeout. You have to call a timeout. Now Andy's pissed at you because you called the timeout. All right, go ahead. I'd have gone for it. Of course you would. Yes. USC's longest play was 21 yards tonight. They're one of the most explosive offenses you'll face all year. What was so key in being able to shut down the explosive? Get to the quarterback, condense the pocket, put depth on the defense play and mix up different bond and bail techniques where they didn't know if we were press or off, throw in some catch technique. I mean, they ran the ball pretty well, you know, but if they were going to beat us, they're going to have to beat us on the ground. This was different. This was a complete opposite team that we had to play last week because you could just tell, like, they, they were running the ball, but they still wanted to throw the ball. And uh, we knew if we could just be able to put them in some long situations because of some breakups and maybe get some takeaways, which we did, uh, we had a chance to win. That's a really good football team. I mean, I'm telling you. That's a really good football coach, Lincoln Riley, and his team, and that's an impressive looking group out there. Two weeks ago, Last I, one, guys. I asked you a similar question about what you do after a loss. Just now, what's it going to be like following after this? <laughs> Whatever Heather wants to do. Uh, uh, so I, I think we're still living with contractors a little bit with the new house, but not tonight. So uh, it's been it's, it's been a heck of a day. Uh, we'll celebrate in our own way, and uh, I just hope that everybody in the state of Minnesota. Um, our, our student body, uh, our fans really enjoy this tonight.
I hope everybody's really safe. Um, enjoy this tonight, and let's go get a Vikings victory in London uh, tomorrow. Very, actually, pretty soon. So pull an all-nighter, everybody. Row the boat, Sky Ma, and go Gophers. Thanks, everybody.